Hey torchbearers, uh, we're back for another Torch Talks. And for this Torch Talk, you, you may notice if you're watching the video, I am wearing my official Torchbearer crew jumper because it arrived this week. And so I thought what better way to represent being a Torchbearer than wear it on a Torch Talk. So I'm representing. <laughs> uh, anyway, let, let's dive in. Uh, I'm really excited with what God's put in my heart to share with you guys this month. Um, you know, I want to take five, five to ten minutes and just unpack a, a quick passage of scripture, um, which is all about shining the light of God's glory in the world. So it's, it's pretty relevant to us as torchbearers. But I really trust as we look at this, there's a couple of truths that I think if we open our hearts to them, it can really change our perspective of, of how we actually go about shining and, and shining God's light in our world. So I'd love you to go with me to dive into this. Uh, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If you've got a Bible there or an iPhone, why don't you just grab it out? Um, and we're just going to read through a few verses there. Like I said, unpack them in, in five to ten minutes and, and let's open our hearts to see what God can say to us through this and, and shine his light brighter, hey? Um, actually, before we start reading, I'm going to quickly say, I mentioned this in the email as well, but every time I read this passage, I always think about memories from when I was in youth because I when, when we were, I was in youth, um, for a while, I was the driver because I was the only one with the license. And so Friday night, youth would finish and I would be doing the rounds, dropping everyone home late into the night, uh, Friday night. And we would drive around middle of winter, windows rolled all the way down, stereo blasting to the doors, like shaking. And, and we were, our anthem was the song Reflector by Planet Shakers. You know, we were hanging our heads out the window like dogs. I want to be a reflector. I want to shine your glory. And we'd all like stare our heads out. I want the whole world know that Jesus lives in me. You know, we probably drove the neighbors out of their minds. So I'm sorry, neighbors. <laughs> if my neighbors did that these days, I wouldn't be that thrilled. But uh, Kyra, Kyra certainly wouldn't be that thrilled. But anyway, we were passionate, young, enthusiastic, zealous, sweaty, smelly, silly youth. Um, but that, that song, all that to say, that scripture, that, it, that song is straight out of this scripture about being a reflector, shining Jesus' light so that all around us can see that Jesus lives in us. So I want to read a few verses from it, just unpack it a little bit briefly and, and give us a new perspective on it. And, and I hope it can, um, it can really impact you. In fact, I'm, I'm going to pray for you before we read those. God, I pray for every torchbearer who's watching this. Holy Spirit, you would work in their hearts. Give me right now the right words to say that will just speak right to their hearts so that you can take that and you can continue the work you're doing in each of us, that we would be those reflectors, shining your light brighter, stronger, further into our world, bearing our torch for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's your prayer, say amen. So I want to quickly start in verse 7. I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. I think they do an excellent job of making it really understandable and, and explaining that the heart of what's there. Um, so verse 7 says this, even the ministry that was characterized by chiseled letters on stone tablets came with a dazzling measure of glory, though it produced death. The Israelites couldn't bear to gaze on the glowing face of Moses because of the radiant splendor shining from his countenance, a glory destined to fade away. All right, what, what is he talking about there? <laughs> um, he, in, in the Old Covenant, uh, when Moses was leading the Israelites, he went up to the mountain and he got God's law. He went and met God. He met God, uh, God's presence. And when he came back with those tablets with the law, because he had been in God's presence, he was literally radiating with glory. It, it says it was literally so bright. His face was so bright that the Israelites could not look at his face. <laughs> you know, have you ever shone with God so brightly that people had to wear sunglasses around you? Because <laughs> that's where Moses was at. Um, and... and it was actually shining because of the glory of God's presence. God's presence was shining out of him that it actually created physical light permeating from his skin that people couldn't even bear to look at him. Um, but it says there that was a glory destined to fade away. See, in Moses' day, they didn't have the Holy Spirit leaving, living inside them. Moses went onto the mountain to meet God and God's presence encountered him. It's like, you know, the, the light from God hit his face and Moses came back and was reflecting that glory from being in God's presence. But it, it says how that glory would fade away and Moses would actually wear a veil over his face so that people wouldn't see the glory diminishing. <laughs> he, rather than see the glory fade away, he'd keep a veil over his face. It goes on to talk about that more in this passage here. So that was the glory that Moses had in the old covenant. That was before Jesus came. It's saying he didn't even have the Holy Spirit in him. He wasn't even born again. He, he was in the old covenant, but just by being God's presence, getting the law, that's the glory that he had. Goes on to say in the next verse, so how much more radiant is this new and glorious ministry of the spirit that shines from us? It says, we now have the Holy Spirit in us 
And you know what? That glory is actually far more brilliant and far more radiant. You know, that, the old glory that Moses had, where he saw, God face, he, he saw God and God's presence hit his face and made it shine and reflect, that's nothing compared to what we've got now. <laughs> that, just think about that. That's not just hyperbole. That's not just you know, blowing this up to, to make it sound more exciting than it is. That is the Bible truth, the glory that we have now with the Holy Spirit in us. It's actually so much more radiant. It, it, it blows the old glory, blows it away. We actually have God's glory, His presence, His Spirit in us. I'm going to jump ahead just for the sake of time because I want to keep this brief. Uh, verse 11, it said, The fading ministry came with a portion of glory. So that's Moses' one because remember it faded away. But now we embrace the unfading ministry of a permanent impartation of glory. So the glory we have, the Spirit in us doesn't fade away. You know, we don't have to live now that we come to church on the weekend, get, encounter God's glory, then walk away and put a veil over our faces as the glory fades away during the week. Sometimes you might feel like that. You know, how many of you feel less holy on Thursday morning than you do on Sunday morning? Or less holy on Sunday afternoon than you do on Sunday morning? Or particularly unholy when you're driving to church on Sunday morning? I've, I have heard it said that children turn into demon-possessed, <laughs> become demon-possessed on Sunday morning on the way to church. Um, not my kids or me growing up, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> all, all that to say, the glory we have, the Holy Spirit in us, that doesn't fade. What Moses had came from a one-off encounter and then it would fade away. What we have isn't like that. It's a growing, building, developing glory, a work that's being done on the inside of us. It goes on to say then the next verse, verse 12, so then with this amazing hope living in us, the Spirit in us, we step out in freedom and boldness to speak the truth. We've got the Spirit in us bringing this continual growing glory that should actually produce a light that shines out of us. You know, maybe your face won't actually glow like Moses did. Maybe it will. I'm not going to say either way. <laughs> but either way, we should be shining bright like torches, just like Moses did. We sh when people see us, they should be like, wow, there's a torch. There's something different there. There's a light. There's a brightness about you. And unlike Moses, though, that shouldn't just be something which then fades away gradually until we meet God again, back and back like this. That should be something which is always there because the Holy Spirit's in us and actually always growing, always becoming brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, I want to jump down to the last verse there. Um, I would encourage you in your own time, just read through this whole passage to study it out, highlight it, read it in some different translations, let the Holy Spirit work it in you. But it says there and then verse 18, Now we can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. We don't need veils. And with no veil, we're all like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. There's that song, I want to be a reflector. Now listen to this, this is the key. We are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You know, the greatest way to be a torchbearer is not to, not to do Christian acts. It's not to give away a certain number of tracts or CDs or go on a certain number of mission trips. There's not, those are excellent things, and those are things we should do. But the essence of being a torchbearer comes from the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Like it says here in verse 18, transfiguring us so that we are changed into the image of Jesus. You know, the, the true torchbearer, the essence of a torchbearer is that we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have his glory in us. And as we fix our eyes and our gaze on that, it changes us from the inside out. We, we, as we um, fill our mind with his word, our, our eyes with his word and who he is, we let him change us step by step. Like it said there, from one, how, how did it word it in that? Um, we move from one brighter level of glory to another. So we're not like Moses where we get a one-off encounter and then it fades away. No, we are torchbearers. That, that light is in us. The Holy Spirit is in you. His glory is inside of you. And now your job is to, to grow from one brighter level of glory to another. It doesn't fade away. It goes the other way. We get brighter. And then as we grow closer to Jesus and become more like him, we get brighter again. Then we grow more closer to Jesus and become more like him. We get brighter again. And we look more in the face of Jesus and become brighter. And we just get brighter and brighter and brighter. So that more and more and more, we're different to the world around us. We stand out from the world because of our love, our peace, our joy, our generosity, our, our compassion, all the things that make us like Jesus. And we actually shine like Moses did. When they looked at Moses, like, wow, it's like a, a 
glowing torch that when they look at us and say, wow, there's a glowing torch, they look like Jesus. <laughs> they look like Jesus because his glory is in them. That, friends, is the essence and the heart of being a torchbearer, that we look like Jesus. Being a torchbearer, it's not about the things we do, it's about what's happening in here on the inside, and then that flows out. And then we love to give things away. You know, we love, like I've said, we love to resource you with things that you can use to, to take that light to your friends and family and world. Things can be like Peter's shadow and those cloths on Paul's body to, to take that glory and take it into others' homes and into their lives. Absolutely. That's got to come from hearts that say, I'm so like Jesus, I have such compassion for you, I love you. And that, that glory pours out for me into your lives. So I hope that encourages you. I hope that challenges and inspires you. Um, my challenge to you this month is to, to be the essence of a torchbearer. Let that torch grow on the inside. Say, Jesus, I want the, your spirit to work on the inside of me. I want that flame to grow brighter. I want to be transfigured this month to go from one brighter level of glory to another. You know, I'd love you to read down below on the torch talk. I actually talk in the... Um, I'm, I'm writing a little section under this um, with some of these points and some specific things that we can do out of this about growing bit by bit and becoming more and more into the image of Jesus. So I'd love you to read that and then, um, yeah, go down and read a, you know, some of the updates of what we've been doing. There's some exciting stuff going on, exciting doors God's opening um, and how we are shining light in our, in our world, shining the light of his glory in the darkest corners. But I'd love to close this by praying for you. Um, as our torchbearer's family. So God, I bless every torchbearer, every person who hears my voice now and in the future. Father, I pray your blessing on them and I pray that this verse, I, I, I speak 2 Corinthians 3, 18 over every torchbearer now, that we would draw close to you with the veil removed from our faces and that we would be like mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus and that we would be, I pray every one of us as torchbearers, we would be transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. Father, that's my prayer for us this month. May we grow from one level of glory to another. May we grow brighter and brighter and brighter as you do work in our hearts. So Holy Spirit, we open our heart to you. We know this work comes from you in us, the, the Spirit in us. So we open our hearts to you. Change us, mold us, even if it's uncomfortable. Change us and may we shine your glory in a brighter, bolder way into our world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Be blessed. Um, we love you. We're praying for you all the time. You're never without prayer. Um, and together we're shining his light in the darkest corners.